the go home show to double or nothing is in the books and the next stop is the pay-per-view this weekend so yeah we're here to talk about everything that went down AEW dynamite last night it's your boy mex wrestlemaniac here on revolution radio duty i'm alongside my co-host Yo, people, it's your boy NK, aka the man that out too sweet to be sour. Yeah, man. Um, I thought it was a decent go home show. I'm not nothing too special. I can't lie. But um, yeah, overall I, for the paper, yeah. I don't feel. I don't feel like you know. I, I'm looking forward to double or nothing, but I don't feel that like this show done anything nah. for me to to kind of really like hype me for it. Um, no, nah, it, it, it didn't. It didn't. You know, like you want the go home show to get that that confirmed. Like, yeah, I'm excited. And this one's like, I was already excited for Double or Nothing. This didn't hurt it, but it didn't add to it. So. Yeah, it didn't add to it. Yeah. Um, I saw something on, you know, you could tell just, just that, well, a couple of things. Obviously, there's the whole Double or Nothing hasn't kind of ticket-wise done particularly well. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe they should look to kind of move Double or Nothing out of Las Vegas. Las Vegas isn't kind of one of these rabid um, wrestling mm. crowds. Um, so mm. maybe going forward, like just try somewhere else. That obviously Las Vegas is because of the theme of Double or Nothing, but maybe there's some yeah. other kind of you know gambling city in in the US mm. where they could kind of do something like this. Um, and then at the same time, it seems like Collision um, has caused somewhat maybe of a distraction in getting ready for this this Double or Nothing show um, mm. because yeah, it hasn't really seemed like it's had that kind of build as previous years. Um, Yeah, compared to that previous double or nothing years, I wouldn't say this build has been on par, but I'd say this build is better than Revolutions. Yeah, oh, yeah. This past yeah, yeah. Revolutions. Yeah, I'd yeah. say this build has been better than this past Revolutions. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is a thing of you move it out of double or nothing because I think we kind of almost got into the same problem with Chicago. I mean, actually, we still have the same problem with Chicago where... They kept returning to that market. And I feel like the best things are when pay-per-view bounce around. I know AW like to do a thing where, like, Double or Nothing is in Las Vegas. All Out would be in Chicago. But I feel like it's you've been around for, like, four years now. It's like the fans that have been to A that want to go AW have probably been multiple times, especially in these cities. Yeah. So I say double or nothing, switch it. I don't know Atlantic City. I don't know what other like um big like gambling vent um um areas there are. Of course Las Vegas is the main one, but like mm. switch it around, like take it to different places. Um yeah. yeah, like you could even do like I know double or nothing has like the whole um um, poker chips thing, but maybe next year you could do more of like a poke, um, more like um, a card based theme, and then maybe take it to New Orleans or something like that. Like, yeah. and there's different ways to you know bet and gamble, so yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's definitely that kind of maybe oversaturation in one particular area, yeah. like I'm saying, that's not known to be a wrestling town, which yeah. is maybe affecting, affecting it somewhat. Um, and, you know, you, you mentioned Chicago. There's obviously news about Chicago on this show, which we'll get into. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, um, you know, you guys that are watching live or watching back the replay, make sure you've hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We're going to get into it. The review of AEW Dynamite and the show opened, as they tend to do these days, with the defense of the international championship. Um, Orange Cassidy defending the title against Kyle Fletcher. Um this match is yeah. what can we say that we haven't already said about Orange Cassidy and these defenses? Like he's on his last legs. They're selling that he is tired. They're selling that he is knackered. He had tape on his back ripped off, like and everything. Like this guy is literally going through it. He um escaped maybe two to three pile drivers. Um, that, and even me, I can't lie. At that point, I was thinking come on, man, you're being dropped on your head now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like when it when is enough enough, in it. Not to say yeah. I I, I like Carl Fletcher, but not to say I, I needed him as my next international champion. It's just like, you know, we're making... The power him... spots for a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, even some he escapes. So they would have actually been more power driver spots than we got. So, um, but yeah, yeah, this match was absolutely fantastic. Um, Carl Fletcher did not get the win. Orange Cassidy retains. Orange Cassidy is mm. going into the 21-man Battle Royal at Double mm. or Nothing um, as the international champion. NK, what did you think of this opening bout? Oh, this opening bout was great, man. I mean, another 
another like it's standard like the, the quality the the consistency with orange cassidy is so high that i can look at this match and be like yeah that's a standard orange cassidy match like and those matches are like four stars every time so it's mm. like yeah like carl fetcher made, made a good showing of himself um in this match and you know yeah like he's definitely i feel like carl fletcher obviously Aussie Open as a team are amazing, but if Carl Fletcher wanted to have like a small, small singles run here and there, like he's definitely got the capabilities to do so. Both of them, to be fair, Carl won Mark. And they op- and what I like about them as a team is that they, they offer very different things. Like Mark's the big burly one. Carl's like um, you know, more the traditional um, you know, um wrestler. So yeah, man, but this match was cold. Um, you know, I like the fact that each win that Orange Cassidy is getting is looking more desperate. Like, he's not even hitting the orange punch anymore. He's just doing any variation of roll up. Um, it's showing that the fatigue is really getting to him, man. And I mean, I wish not, not, not to say this match in particular, but I wish we got something like this at the pay per view instead of the battle royal. I know we, I know we complained about that when it was first announced, but like. This is why we wanted a traditional match, or at least like a triple threat. I wouldn't have mind a triple threat, but yeah, on this pay per view, there's a lot of multi man matches, so I don't know. But um, it's because of stuff like this, like when Orange Cassidy's just like left to wrestle, like he's obviously one of the best workhorses in the world, and we're privileged that we live in the era where both companies have like a top workhorse champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hundred mm. percent. I think. Um, one thing that's maybe been missing from this reign, if we want to be really, um, you know, particular and critique it, is that it's just been very open, challenge heavy, um, mm. as opposed to maybe we, we could have had a couple of stories within within there to kind of really stretch stretch it and see a different side of things. Um, but that's being particular. These we can't complain about. You know, these matches they've they've been great. They're telling the story of him being broken down. Um, as I do, I, I watch Dynamite first thing in the morning. What, as I usually don't do, I go. I went onto Twitter first this morning. I don't do it, so I don't, you know, see any spoilers or anything like that. Um, and I actually saw that obviously um, Aussie Open have they're all elite. They've been they've been signed, which is um, mm-hmm. yeah, man. It's good to get the United Empire boys. The the OG has got to join them next year. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we got these two in, which is brilliant. And mm-hmm. you we're talking about you know the singles run. I, I, my introduction to these men was seeing um, Mark Davis and Carl Fletcher in progress mm. before the pandemic mm. as singles yeah. competitors, matches against each other, funny enough. So, okay. um, yeah, I, I think, you know, there's, there's a tremendous amount of um, potential there for that, maybe sometime down the road. But this is a very good tag team just to add to AEW ranks. Um, so, and I'm happy to see it. They, they do need to kind of repair the damage that they have partly done with that tag division and what the trios division has obviously caused um, within the tag division um, as well. But obviously just um, not to kind of go into predictions too tough, but Orange Cassidy, well, for those interested in predictions, it's going to be up on the channel very soon. We've done predictions for double or nothing myself. Mm -hmm. You you can see that very soon. Um, But I know as a spoiler guys, I know we and you both said Orange Cassidy to retain at yeah. this battle royal, but more and more, I'm thinking now: is this a way that Tony Khan is thinking we can we can crown a new international champion without Orange Cassidy being pinned? Like they've yeah. done a lot of work and put into Orange Cassidy and built him up. Like they don't maybe mm. want to pin him. There's a, some guys that they're mentioning that are gonna you know quote unquote headline collision. Andrade, um, El Idolo, Amiro could come over here and win this battle royal because you don't know who's going to be in it. Are you still confident it'll be your Orange Cassidy um, retention here? Or um, I, I believe I'm still confident. It's definitely your suggestion of like like Tony Khan taking the title away from Orange Cassidy and like protecting him is is doable. Like we've seen that happen a lot in wrestling where like they want to protect their champion, but I'm not particularly a fan of that. I feel like a champion should go out on his sword um, and lose in a single, especially a baby face champion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's possible. I mean, if they were to do it um, where he does lose it in a battle royal, then there's only certain characters that can get away with that. Like the snarky, cheeky heel. Um, and then, Maybe with Collision, one of those titles does need to be, I wouldn't say like a mainstay on the show, but like, you know, one of the titles does need to be featured prominently on the show. But um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be a fan of that. 
But again, we're, we're going to touch on like a, a potential competitor. Apparently, Ricky Starks and Jay White isn't happening. It's, I don't know. but yeah. uh, And they might be in the thing. So if, if Jay White was to win the title, actually, no. I, I, I wouldn't be happy if he won it in a battle royal. I take that back. Not in a battle yeah, royal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But not in a battle royal. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, I just don't think it's the right thing to do um, to take the title off him. But then it's like, if you do a battle royal and then you take it off him, let's say two weeks after double or nothing, what was the point of the battle royal and double or nothing? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a weird situation they've put themselves in. Yeah, it's it's very interesting um, their choice in doing this. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. You mentioned Ricky Starks. Mm. Um, yeah, Ricky Starks following this this match, he had a backstage segment with Renee and he's saying that, yeah, he's turning his attention back to winning gold. He wants to win the international um, title. He's most likely going to be in a battle royal. He was attacked backstage by Juice Robinson. Um, Jay White joined them. They said that, yeah, this is far from over, something along those lines. So I guess we're getting more of that. Um, I'm sure we're going to get a real blow off um, between Jay White and Ricky Starks because obviously the last match ended in a DQ. Um, anything you want to add to that? Or um, just I kind of wanted this to be all done at the pay per view. Um, I don't want this. I don't want this. That I, I just I felt like this feud has been uh, it's been all right, but certain that you know if you put it on the pay per view. Let these men have a match, blow it off, and then move forward. Then next week, like this is a problem. Ricky Stark should have cut next week, the week after. Yeah, like I feel like just putting them in the battle royal. I don't know if this is going to be like you know, like how Rampage would announce matches on the card. I don't know if there's going to be a, a a match that Excalibur announces. Just put in the card: Ricky Starks versus Jay White. Yeah, 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 whatever. But I I actually hope that's the case because. Mm. I don't know. I don't want to see these men in the battle royal, and then both of these yeah. men get eliminated because they're not winning the title. So it's like, uh, yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yeah, Mm-mm. I'm not feeling it. Yeah, likewise. Um, Jungle Boy had a had a sit down promo. Um, he was kind of talking about the um, importance of um, Los, An- Los Las Vegas um, to him. I believe he lives in Las Vegas, and that he's gonna leave Las Vegas with the the world title. Um, Probably one of the better promos from Jungle Boy, probably because it was pre-recorded and, you know, he could mm. do um, multiple takes or whatever the case may be. Mm. Um, back in the ring now, um, we had um, FTR come out. So FTR and obviously um, they're in a, a back and forth with um, Jeff Jarrett and um, Jay Lethal. They got a tag team title match where Mark Briscoe is going to be the, the, the special guest referee. Um, FTR, you know, basically said that these men aren't going to beat us for the championship. They made a lot of pokes at um, TNA, Dixie Carter, and things of that <laughs> nature, um, which was good um, by by Dax. Then we saw Mark Briscoe come out. Mark Briscoe wasn't wasn't best pleased, and obviously Dax was apologizing for that that power driver when he couldn't see. Mark Briscoe wasn't really taken to that apology. Um, what did he do? He slapped. He slapped Dax in it. Yeah, he slapped him. Like, yeah, um, Cash tries to squash it, but then Mark Mark was basically on one. Even when the um, Jeff Jarrett and all them man came out, Sanjay Dutt, he pushed them around, slapped Jeff Jarrett, like pushed Jay Lethal. So he's kind of showing that he's not on either guy's, either team side here. Um, yeah. And yeah, he, um, no, so no allegiances before this. Um, I, again, I'm not sure this segment did much for me going into the. The, the pay-per-view like the the power driver spot was like oh yeah is is mark gonna now be on these man's side as opposed to ftr side this didn't really it just showed that he's gonna be a neutral referee almost um mm-hmm. so yeah i'm looking forward to the the match i'm looking forward to seeing ftr in action because that's always a treat um but yeah what did you think of this segment i thought the segment was okay i thought dax's promo was like heelish to me, like yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was. It was a like, jerk. It was a jerk promo. Like yeah, yeah, like like in. If I look at it from, of course, if we look at it from like smart wrestling fans, like Karen Jarrett in TNA was you know like a nasty character, but like him calling him like like what he called her mm. was like. Whoa, like that's not nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's not nice. Like um. Yeah, but um, I guess 
you know, I, I guess they kind of had to like um, have some injury going into the match in terms of like, oh, who's Mark Briscoe going to side of and making him a neutral referee? I think we all know what's going to happen. Like, um, you know, Mark Briscoe in the middle of the match is going to like turn, not turn, but he's, he's, he's going to like favour FTR in the middle of the match and then he's going to maybe hit um, Jay Lee for somebody and then FTR will get the win. But um, yeah, this segment didn't do much in terms of like hyping me up for the match. You know, it is. As a build, I've enjoyed this, but now I'm like, oh, we're actually getting the match. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Yeah. Dude, it's one of those things where the build has been entertaining, but I'm like, oh, like, uh, like as much as I love Jeff Jarrett, I'm like, excited to see him wrestle in the ring. Not particularly, I, I just like him yeah. around. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, likewise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, I think I feel they could do something um, really fun with them lot winning the titles. Um, but then again, I know it's, it's I'm literally thinking of, of it from the moment perspective. I'm not looking, yeah, at and um, Jay Lee for title of money. Um, yeah, that actually beating these lot would be quite entertaining. Um, yeah. but yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, another backstage interview, um, Renee with an one of the four pillars of um, Sammy was basically saying he's not interested in MJF's check because Renee asked him, is he, you know, that's still on the table. So just take one. Yeah, Sammy said that, you know, people have been trying to buy him his whole whole life, his bosses and people he's worked for and all that kind of stuff, trying to buy him. Um, anything on Sammy Guevara? Um, I said this the other day with SP3. I don't know where this Sammy Guevara baby face turn has happened. Yeah, let's I'm talk confused. about it. <laughs> I'm confused by it. Um, I don't like it. It is very random. And oh, do you know what it is? Like, I don't like my only hope is that they swerve us in the pay per view, but it's not a swerve if I see it coming. Um, so it's like, I don't. I, I, I don't get it. Like, I liked the dynamic of the Fatal Forward because it was like two heels, two baby faces. All of them have their grievances with one another. But then at the end of the night, like, in the main event, Sammy's coming out for the save. I mean, it's a different segment where Sammy's coming out for the save. Sammy's cutting these, you do, man, didn't believe. And all of these men are now cutting the same promo same of promo. like, you, you didn't believe in me. It's like, brother, like, no, like we need variety. Like, yeah. I'm t- like it's they're all merging into like this. This isn't making Sammy a face. I don't get it. Um, mm. yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of it. Just keep Sammy the way he was in the beginning. Like he's fine. I was liking him embracing this heel. This like you know this okay like people are booing me, but now I know how to like generate more heat with the booze. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is this is this project with Sammy Guevara. I'm not feeling it. The babyface project, him as a wrestler, I yeah. understand, but this yeah. babyface project is not it for me. Maybe so. Maybe that's why is because he wrestles like a babyface. You know, he's very entertaining with his spots and things of that nature, and mm. maybe that's why they're trying it. Or maybe it's just to literally make MJF more dastardly when MJF does get that that win. Um, at double or nothing, he's like mm. put three baby faces down, sort of thing. Um, because yeah, otherwise I, I can't understand the the sudden switch. But I did notice in the promo um, that he had with Renee here, there was a few cheers, like obviously a few lines that he put he said through that. You know, I'm not taking Ma- uh, Max's check. There were a few cheers and stuff. So mm. it, it's still the general when he comes on screen. Boo. But then there were some yeah. things he was saying that were resonating with people. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, I guess the the, the the truth and the proof and the pudding will be post um, this this feud, post double or nothing, where they go with Sammy Guevara. Yeah. Um. Next up in terms of action, we had the AEW Trios Championship match. The House of Black went up against AR Fox, Blake Christian, and Metalik. Um. Obviously, this was um. What do they call it? The House of House of was it open? What do they call it? Open their, house. Their open um, house. That's it. Yeah, the open house house rules, and um, the rule was that they basically didn't have to be a tag in, but one man, one one out. So it wasn't like a tornado Mm. tag, but yeah, one man didn't have to tag his partner to come in. If he left the ring, someone else could just come in. Um, Mm. But again, I must harp on about the excellence in the presentation 
of this stuff like black spotlights the titrons go in with some jiggly thing they had like some kaleidoscope looking effect over the crowd yeah the it, was, it was dreamy <laughs> this, is, this is excellent like this is absolutely excellent and i remember you saying when they first done this um all of a sudden we're gonna remember this title run because yeah. even just the way they're framing it it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant um yeah, they, they 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 it didn't last long. Everyone looked brilliant. Brody King, you know, he he's he's fast becoming everyone's favorite within this group um, yeah. with his performances. Now, if I'm correct, um, and yeah, um, House House of Black got the win. House of Black got the win here. Um, Ar Fox tapped out. Am I correct in thinking that um, what's these man called? The acclaim, the acclaim still yeah. have a. They still got something bubbling with House of Black. In it. Yes, they've got a match on Rampage, um, and it's a trios match specifically on on, on Friday, on Friday, I believe. Um, For the title? No, no, just a random. It's a two nut match. But what I think is going to happen after that match is we're going to get a promo from the acclaim, basically staking their claim at Double or Nothing for the trios title. Oh, the acclaimed just have a match. Yeah, the acclaim just have a match. Oh, I thought you so meant House of Black don't have a match. Yeah, House of Black don't have a match, but acclaimed mm. have like a random two nut okay. match. And then I think what's going to happen at um, Rampage is that the acclaim after that match are going to announce their whatever. Uh, yeah, their 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 stake to the um, title, which yeah. we knew this was kind of coming. I mean, mm. let's see what they can do with it, but. Uh, I expect a, but I expect these men to get bodied. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I need their claim to get. Obviously, like it's a pay per view, they'll get time. But I want a dominant win from House of Black. But there's a minor nitpick I have, and it's not necessarily about the match, but it's about the presentation of like AR Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, on the stat, like there's guys that in AW right that will be featured consistently every week, but lose every week. Yeah. So when they come up as contenders, we're like, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's not because I love seeing AR Fox and Grand Metalik and Blake Christensen on my TV. But these men don't win. These yeah. men don't. Um, and I guess I guess with this specifically, they kind of bypassed it because it's an open challenge. But it's a thing I've noticed a lot where it's like, the reason why, like, a lot of these title defences outside of pay-per-views don't mean much to us is because there's very little build-up within the dynamites of, like, title contenders. So they'll be like, okay, next week this guy's challenging for the title. Why? Yeah. And most of the time it's an open challenge, so they get away with it. Yeah. But they're getting away with it. And I feel like there's, there's sometimes where you just have, like, a... A two week build, just like I don't know, announce that, that and I, I don't mind the battle. Uh, announce like a mini tournament, um, and this is kind of like the obviously the rankings got to a point where like they weren't obeying them, but this is kind of why I was in favor of the rankings because it was like there was order to things. At least in the beginning, there was order. There was like okay, cool. This person is number four. If this number four beats number three, they move up and we can see the progression of a wrestler. Yeah. But now it's just that with no rankings, it's like essentially they can just be like, okay, like you get a title shot, you get a title shot, you get a title shot. And it's like, we can't really question it, but at the same time, it just feels undeserving. Yeah. The the rankings, yeah, were were absolutely excellent until they won. Like yeah. That was one of the things that made me fall in love with AEW early doors because I just thought this is just so different. It's, it's so well done. Um, and obviously, this is still a, a predetermined sport. So we can still make whoever we want win to push them into these positions of number one contender yeah. as per the rankings. Um, and then, yeah, they just stopped using it. They started stat padding the rankings with things on dark. And then all of a sudden, someone that was not on the rankings was, was ranked second or ranked first. You're thinking, yeah. what? Man are telling me no because they won a hell of matches on dock. And I'm like, bruv, like, what kind of mm. nonsense is this? Like, yeah, the, the rankings, um, I still think about them <laughs> literally till today. Like, just thinking if they just could have like worked it a bit better, like the rankings was really something that set AEW apart and made it feel different. Um, 
but yeah, you're you're right. It's like some of these matches, some of these guys getting opportunities. You're just thinking like, well, this is just a glorified squash, isn't it? It's a glorified job yeah. because we know, you know, you don't win matches basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, loving what um, House of Black are doing um, right now. The, sure. the presentation, everything is just brilliant. So more of that, man. Um, we had a promo backstage with um, the Blackpool Combat Club, and they will look sick in their uh, their bomber jackets and stuff. Um, again, they're just kind of saying, you know, laying the setting the standard, who they are, what they're gonna do against the elite. Obviously, they've got this this um, anarchy in the arena match um, coming up. Um, now, I don't know if you caught this, but from what I've seen online this morning on Twitter. Some people have said that Moxley in the promo made some type of reference that could be seen that Punk is joining the BCC against the Elite. Mm. I don't know what we're I, referring to. I have no idea what people are talking about. What? <laughs> Let's not dwell on because Okay, cool. Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know if there was a line in there that that, that people are latching uh, onto and saying, oh, is he talking about Punk joining? Like, And I, I don't mean uh, Punk... And Moxley, from all we've seen in the last few months, don't necessarily have the best relationship. So mm-hmm. unless they're all just ready to do business, I doubt that's the case. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's just something I saw online, which I wanted to see if, if you had picked up on. But no, nah, not cool. even the But uh, but yeah, I thought this promo segment was amazing. I thought like mm-hmm. Moxley as a promo is he's so efficient with his words. Like yeah. it's like. Like Boxy's best thing is just like conveying like intensity. Like him, like it's it's so weird because obviously like Danielson cut the promo first, and Danielson is by in by no means a bad promo. It's a great promo. When yeah. Moxley got on the mic and just started talking and just started selling the match, and I was like, you know what? And even we'll talk about the his final promo at the end. See that I was one? Like I thought this one was good. <laughs> when he delivered that last one, I said, "Nah." I was like, "I said, I said, I need this." You see, like this is the first. This is like with this BCC elite feud. It's obviously the best feud in the company, mm. but with these segments, I felt I need this match today, like yeah. now, like yeah, I yeah. want it, like now. It's just yeah, man. Like the these, oh uh, man, and and that's what, what exactly what it's supposed man. to do. That's exactly. Yeah. What it's- it's meant to create that urgency, yeah. like, oh, I can't wait yeah. till Sunday or whatever the case is. Like, I need yeah. this now, sort of thing. And yeah, deliver. Yeah, um, For sure. yeah, we we had um following that, we had um MJF come out. Um, and MJF was, you know, basically running down. Well, to be fair, at first he was putting over um the other yeah. talents he's gonna be in this four-way with saying that they were here from day one, knowing you of us before um AEW and before we've made our stamp here and we start it all started at double or nothing for all of us and you mm-hmm. know we're the future of the company and, and that was all kind of nice to see him acknowledge that and I say in the same breath he obviously put down Derby um made a, a, a jab basically that Derby should die during his his climb of Mount Everest that mm. Sammy Guevara and sticking out of his tongue and this that and the other and that um Jungle Boy is gonna bore himself to death like he made jabs at these men and obviously said why he's gonna keep the championship and that Derby came out and he was the last I guess of the four pillars to come out and really have their promo segment on this show saying that you know AEW is his home AEW let him do things that other places wouldn't um, but he wants to be the face of AEW and he needs the title to do that um, so he's going to beat him made reference to the um, what was it the the move that MJF beat him with um, yeah, um, color what was it um, oh I can't remember. He- head so, head so, something take headlock down. take down. Head, yeah, yeah, yeah. Headlock yeah. take down. And um, yeah, um, MJF, just as he does, just kind of shut him up with a low blow, kicked him mm-hmm. um down below. Um we saw Sammy Guevara run running to make the save on part of his baby face campaign. <laughs> and um then we saw Jungle Boy come out. He got um some fists, laid some fists on MJF. He picked up the the world title, done the uh the you know mm-hmm. I've touched the world title now, so I'm not winning it. Sort of mm, the <laughs> curse. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I I think you know we've seen that MJF is you know the guy really carrying this this whole feud. Yeah. Um, Darby Allen has been you know second best, and you know quite frankly been quite quite brilliant in places as well during this feud. Yeah. Um, but these are all young guys. Rightly say you know said that they're going to be the future of the company. None of them 
are necessarily prepared to win the world title now, apart from the man that actually has the world title right now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, that, that that was it in terms of getting ready for this story. Um, like you said, it probably was at one point leading into this pay-per-view, the A feud getting into double or nothing. But since then, the BCC and the Elite have obviously shown yeah. their experience and ran away with it. Nah, for sure. Yeah, I feel like this was a decent segment. Um, you know, MJF was doing MJF. Like, he's an amazing promo. The Darby Allen promo, as much as I've liked his promos, that was, I've heard him cut that promo before. Mm. Um, I, I've I've heard him cut that same promo before. So, I was kind of like, okay, like, a bit of repetition. But you know what? Like, we're literally a week up. We're literally days away from the pay-per-view. So, it's like, the feud has done its job in terms of, like, okay, getting everyone... In here, I felt like the feud start had has had its hot moments. Um, like the first interaction between all four of these was like probably the my favorite segment in this feud. And there's been decent feuds. Um, I mean decent segments here and there, but the feud overall has been decent. Um, but yeah, I feel like the match though at double or nothing is going to be ridiculous. I feel like yeah, when like when when we get to the actual match, like these all four guys are going to show out. Like yeah, so I'm I'm excited for the actual match at hand as well. Yeah, should be very very good. Um, mm. They're gonna, you know, who knows the next time that apart from MGF, these other three will see a main event on a pay per view. So yeah. yeah, they're gonna make the most of it for sure. Um, next up, we had Taya Valkyrie versus Lady Frost. Um, obviously, we know Ty Valkyrie is in a feud. She's going to face um, Jade Cargill for the TBS Championship at Double or Nothing. Um, this match versus and Lady Frost, they got a decent amount of time. Um, you know, maybe just about seven or eight minutes or something like that. Um, we saw Jade Cargill come out with um, Layla Gray and her her counsel. Um, what's this guy's name again? The the Mark lawyer Sterling. Sterling. That's it. And um, just kind of taunt. Um, Taya Valkyrie it all went up in arms when she delivered the finishing mood and um, the role to Valhalla, which is obviously the same as Jade Cargill's finishing move to Jaded. Um, Taya Valkyrie got the win here. Lady Frost, for those that don't know, is a is a constant on Ring of Honor, but I can't lie, she doesn't win on Ring of Honor TV either. Um, this was a, a massive, I mean, I know we don't divvy up the show how we used to, but for me, this was the worst segment of, of the show just because mm -hmm. it's an absolute waste of, um, a, a, you know, a last minute attempt to make us all care about a match we probably don't care about. Um, Taya Valkyrie facing Lady Frost. What the hell does Lady Frost have to do with this? No. Why wasn't this a, a face-off and like a pull-apart segment? Why wasn't this Taya Valkyrie at least taking on Layla Gray? Like, mm -hmm. th this just had nothing to do with nothing. Jade just stood on the, the entranceway, um, like being so annoyed that she's using the move that we already know that she uses, that you've already had a whole match stipulation around that she can't use. Like, why are we still surprised by this? Like, it's done absolutely nothing to further this feud. I'm still in the camp of maybe thinking Taya Valkyrie is going to um, win here and it's just going to be like, well, what was really the point in all of this? Even on the other side of the fence, again, I know you're in the camp of maybe Jade just retains here because they're not ready to for whoever's meant to beat Jade to come and beat Jade. And I'm just thinking, but then we just got to continue with same old, same old until that person comes around. Like, they've dropped mm -hmm. the ball massively with this and the TBS title in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought like this is this was a massive waste of time. Um, it was a, I was looking at, like I was going through. Oh, my my camera dropped. Uh, uh, there we go. But yeah, it's just like a massive uh waste of time. I felt like, why why should I care about this match? And the thing is, it's like, was both out, we're stuck in a match where I don't like both outcomes. Um, if we, Jade retains, if Jade retains, like we continue this. Stagnant team, um, TBS title room with Ty Valkyries. I have no investment in Ty Valkyrie whatsoever. Mm. Um, based on this feud, and it's like you've just wasted, and now it just feels like the whole uh, that, however, how many days of Jade's reign, it feels like a massive waste. It feels like for it to end like this, is, yeah. is, is this the ending? Nah, nah, uh, so either way, I feel like we lose, but like. You know, I always, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. So I, I'm sticking with what I know, which is um, this mediocre run. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And no, I hear that for sure. I hear that for sure. Um, it's a shame because they've made a lot of Jade and ultimately now it just looks like they've made this title for Jade. Um, I, I, I'm yeah. very worried when Jade drops the title where she's going to be because she's not ready for the main event, especially with, you know, the the the, the live action Tony Storm and Jamie Hayter are going to give us on the pay-per-view. She ain't ready for the mm-hmm. main event if people think that she's the next step is world champion. Like, mm, they're going to have to give that title to someone else and the quality of those matches to start declining before Jade gets gets the title and we can believe it somewhat. And I'm sorry to say that, but it's, it's the truth. <laughs> like, you know what? Yeah. Mm. Obviously, there's a segment with Willow that we'll touch on later. Yeah. But now that Willow's New Japan Strong Champion, and we don't know if they AW feature these women a lot, but do you think Jade might go for that next? The strong title? Yeah. That's where she should go. I think that's it. Yeah. Now you say that, that's a brilliant option. I think that's a brilliant option. I think delving into whatever Ring of Honor are doing with Athena could be a brilliant option. Um we cannot force her to take a step up into somewhere she's not ready. One, no. into somewhere that AEW are still kind of developing themselves to. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we can't do that. And there isn't just, there isn't enough time on TV. There isn't enough investment in for her to just have to get away from a title right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so where they can kind of lean on New Japan um, and, you know, with, uh, yeah, that, that could be a very yeah. good it could be a very Cause it's the, yeah because it's the strong title or not the IWGP women's title yeah so it's not like because IWGP women's title like there's a there's a like you said it's the we say the quality of AEW's women's wrestling is here the women's mm. title is just like in terms of like yeah. the stardom women mm. but I feel like with the strong stuff I don't know and obviously I say that specifically because Willow's champion now I don't yeah. want Jade to necessarily pin Willow yeah but I feel like there's a feud between Jade and Willow, like a genuine feud between those two. There's mm. money there. Yeah. It might, there's money to be made in a feud between those two. And if you center around a strong woman's title, I think, I think you can do something interesting. But like, yeah, this TBS thing is tired. Um, and let's move on. Nah, well, yeah. Move on to what, though? That's the problem. Like, there's no, That's there's no shit, direction yeah. because I can't lie. Like, if when, like, and no, when if Tara Valkyrie pins Jade on on Sunday, nobody's gonna be like, "Oh my God, Tara Valkyrie!" Won. Everyone's just gonna look at the screen like Tara won. Nobody yeah, yeah. like there's I, I, unless you're a hardcore Tara Valkyrie fan, nobody cares. Nobody cares. This is it. This is it. Ah, well, we'll we'll see what happens come come Sunday. Um, next up, we got Tony Khan, and I have to, I have to say before we get into this. I am really liking him as kind of on-screen GM. <laughs> point my head in, give an announcement. Like, I've, obviously, I've made a lot of noise in the past about too many announcements. Everything's an announcement, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I like on, on-screen GM. I've always liked it. And although it's not the traditional, I'm literally coming out, I'm coming to the ring and doing this and, and inserting myself into places, I really like this style of it. Um, and just kind of giving whatever the announcement could be you know, he could do this for like big matches or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. Maybe not oversaturate it, but yeah, I I, I, mm-hmm. I do like this inclusion of it. Um, he was obviously there to kind of let us know the big news on um, AEW Collision. The first show is on June 17th. And lo and behold, as we probably all knew and all assumed it was going to be, they are going to do the first episode in the United Center in Chicago, um, which basically somewhat confirms CM Punk is back. Um, uh, I'm, I'm yeah, man, much they haven't announced CM Punk. I don't know if they will. I think they'll probably wait to see if um, the, the tickets go on sale for that particular show this weekend. And I, I think mm-hmm. they'll probably wait to see how the, the, the tickets do, do over the weekend. If, the, if it sells out, then they can leave, they don't need to mention Punk in it. Um, if it doesn't, or if it's if it's kind of moving Higgy Hagger in terms of the sales, maybe we see Punk at the pay per view in some mm-hmm. way somehow to kind of warm us up and you know he says i'm going to be back on the 17th of june on collision and yeah then sales go up we'll see but yeah no surprises here Nah, no surprises here but there's there's something you mentioned about um, tk being an on-screen character mm. have you been on have you seen the video of stokely halfway's put up recently the, the um, footage of stokely halfway put up so there's, 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 there's like a little like 
like vignette that Stokely Hathaway has put up, and he's basically like in the Jaguars office. I think he's basically sitting at Tony Khan's like desk, and he's basically yeah. he's, he's insinuating that he wants to take a general manager role. Insinuating. Um, now, what would you think of the idea of like Stokely Hathaway as like a I don't know collision GM? <laughs> I don't... Uh, you know what the problem is? He is yeah. too jokey. Mm. And I don't want that to be a remit for people to now think this is a B show, they're more relaxed over there or anything wow. like that. Um, I think just as a GM, I think he would he would do good. Um, mm. But yeah, I'm not sure if the perce- our perception of him could harm what our then perception of collision would be, if that makes sense. Mm. I think Collision's perception will be fine with CM Punk. I think because you have a star in CM Punk who's mm. like the like who's gonna be like the flagship of the show, I feel like you could get away with Stokely. I think you'd have to tone him down a little, a little yeah. bit in terms of like, yeah, like okay. But it almost like you could kind of make him like like Teddy Long wasn't somebody who took that seriously, but he was mm. a presence nonetheless. But no, it just made me think because, like, if, uh, I'll send you the clip on. Uh, I saw it on Twitter, but it was like it was, it was, it was like a lot of just smoke and mirrors. But like he was like, like he was in an office. Like he, the the vignette, the vignette was hilarious. But it was like, hmm, Stokely Hathaway is a GM because I feel like this firm stuff. He's above this firm stuff. Like even he though, is. like he's even <laughs> though he's even though he's the most entertaining part of this firm stuff. He's he's. You should be doing this. way more. Um, and it's like for me, if you're not gonna pair him with a lot, because I understand like people totally can't reservation to pair him with someone because he is quite a jokey person. And sometimes people have said on Twitter he, he might even steal the spotlight away from certain talent he's trying to enhance. Yeah. So I'm like, just have him as like a um like managerial role, like on screen, like a GM. Yeah. Or like an advocate, I don't know, but just because I feel like he's above all the managers, like in AW, aside from people like Don Callis, but he's above yeah. Mark Sterling, he's above, you know, whatever Matt Hardy's got going on, he's above all of these man. So it's like maybe put him in a GM role or something of that nature would be interesting. But be good, yeah, yeah, that was a suggestion. No, I agree, I agree. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a case of maybe having to tone it down somewhat. Um, yeah. But yeah, okay. Um, next up, we had um, the contract signing for Adam Cole and Chris Jericho. Um, I thought this segment was was one of the best segments on the on the show. To be fair, yeah. Um, the contract signing was that obviously they're having an unsanctioned match, and that um, you know whatever happens, AEW is not liable. Um, Adam Cole came out with Roderick Strong. Chris Jericho came out with the JAS. Um, words were passed between the two. Adam Cole really put over how how angry he was at the whole situation. That he's controlling himself not to dive and hit Jericho right there and then because they had a no touch clause um, for this contract signing. Um, Jericho played the footage of Britt Baker getting beaten up by the outcast and saying, "What kind of man are you? You watch the p- woman you love um, get beaten up and all that kind of stuff." And Jericho said, "You're stupid for signing this. It's a not un- unsanctioned match. The JAS can all get involved. This, that, and the other." Um, and it's just obviously Cole and Strong. And Cole said, "Yeah, you know, I thought about that, and that's why I'm um, getting involved in this. You know, I have a friend in in Vegas, which I I grew up idolizing." Um, he's homicidal, he's suicidal, he's genocidal. His name is Sabu. And Sabu comes out, um, a, li- a little pop, a, y- a young pop, I would say. The place didn't go like mental or anything like that. Um, Sabu comes down, does his pose, gets into the ring. Sabu just dashed the chair at, um, I think it was uh, Matt Menard. Um, JAS leave the ring. Sabu's going to be now the um, special enforcer for this unsanctioned match. I, like I said, one of the be- better segments really sold this this match one last time. For me, <laughs> Sabu is completely unnecessary. It, it Maybe it's just a day for a man that lives in Las Vegas. Who knows? Um, yes, it's unsan- unsanctioned and that's his whole history with EC- ECW, the hardcore stuff, no disqualification. But even the whole Adam Cole 
why would he call Sabu? Like I'm here like a like a twat waiting for Ke- Kyle O'Reilly and um, mm. Bobby Fish to walk out or something like that. And he says Sabu, and I'm just thinking, oh hey Sabu, cool, but mm. really like. You know, when he said homicide, I, I thought he was going to bring out actual homicide. Homicide, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought he was going to bring out actual homicide. Um, I don't mind the Sabu thing. It's uh, it, it's like, it's weird, but it's like, ah, like Sabu. Like, okay. Like, my question is, what is he going to do at his age? But <laughs> I guess that remains to be seen, isn't it? What he's going to do at his age? And even, the, but even, but I still think, I think Kyle O'Reilly, I don't, if Kyle O'Reilly's obviously not injured, he shows up at the pay per view. I think that's going to be a because the numbers don't add up either way. The numbers still like, don't add up. Yeah, they they still don't add up. So I feel like, um, but what I hope this match doesn't turn into is a multi man brawl all the way through because then I kind of feel it take it's anarchy in the arena then because yes. you've got yeah. an unsanctioned match that's got multiple people in it and then you've got anarchy in the arena later on. So I hope yeah. it's a thing where obviously like. I don't know, like, the Jericho Appreciate Society are involved in the beginning, but they kind of get taken out and the match kind of just revolves around Adam Cole and Chris Jericho because then it feels like you're treading on Anarchy and Arena's toes. And Anarchy and Arena is probably going to be the better match anyway, but mm. you don't want to do things that are too similar. So, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Um yeah, they, but they, but you know Jericho done what Jericho does best in terms of selling his yeah. match, and Adam Cole, you know, he's really getting back into his element. I'm seeing the Adam Cole from Ring of Honor from NXT like really come through now, like. Yeah. Um. So it's just to get those reps in in the ring. Um. Again. Um. But yeah, he's getting back to his his brilliant best. Um. Straight after yeah. this, we had um Roderick Strong and Daniel Garcia stayed back from both sides. They had a match. Um. It was a really good. Um, TV match between between these two guys. Um, obviously, it's highly favored. Strong is um, just joined the company, but Strong is brilliant. Like this is where he he goes and does his best work when it's just like no real. He doesn't have to tell story or cut promos or anything like that. He can just go in the mm-hmm. ring. This is what he does. Um, and um, yeah, there was a lot of crazy stuff in this match. Um, we saw Strong with um, a brain buster. Um, yeah, uh, I, I guess we might again. We'll see them involved some way, somehow, in the Adam Cole and um, Jericho feud. But um, yeah, it was a really good match. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a really good match. Um, I have much to say on the match. I thought the match was like. I was. I was a little disappointed. I was say I was a tad disappointed because when I thought when I saw this match, I was like, "Oh my god, this is match of the night contender." And I was like, "It wasn't that for me," but. It was still like a pretty good match. Uh, I just love seeing Roderick Strong on like national um national TV, and you know I just want to see more of him wrestle, man. Um, I'm just excited to see what they do with Roderick Strong like next, and obviously like the next pay per view cycle. Like we'll get into this after Double or Nothing, but it's Forbidden Door, and it's like he needs to be on that card. Like probably not in a singles match. I don't mind him in a multi man match, but like yeah. Roderick Strong needs to be there. He must be there. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. And yeah, I hear your your opinion on the match. Um, they didn't really like get out of second gear, as they say. Yeah. Like, but it was it was calm for what we got. It was calm, but you we yeah, know these guys can can do much more than can deliver. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. Yeah. That takes us to the main event of the show. Um. Obviously, we had a double double jeopardy match a couple of weeks ago where. Cardio Castagnoli beat Ray Phoenix. So Ray Phoenix and um, his brother Penta, the Lucha Bros, had to put their Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships on the line against Claudio and his partner Wheeler Utah. Um, again, this match was pretty pretty fun. Um, you know, they did they did what they had to do. Both teams it was it was it was a really good showing. Um, just to get to the finish, we saw. Um, it was a mix between Penta and and, and um, Phoenix were basically hitting moves on Utah um, whilst um, the referee was distracted by Alex Abrahentes. Um, the Young Bucks came from under the ring to hold Claudio so Claudio couldn't um, get involved. Um, and then we saw Utah um, get pinned. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously that's just further, furthering the feud of the BCC and the Elite. The, the Lucha Bros get to keep their um, tag 
tag titles, the Ring of Honor tag titles. Um, I really enjoyed um, Danielson on t- commentary again. He was kind of channeling his inner William Regal, um, laying into um, Wheeler Utah at times. Oh, we told Utah how to pin people, you know, hold both shoulders down. Um, you know, he was talking about Utah had a dislocated shoulder or might have had a dislocated shoulder in the match. He said, oh, we've dislocated his shoulder loads of times. <laughs> sort mm-hmm. of thing, just saying like, basically showing that these three in Claudio... Danielson and Moxley are really putting Utah through the ringer because they want him to be the next best and he's he's in training basically um in the BCC so that was um really nice touches there um yeah following the the match obviously young Bucks they teased um the BCC lads in the ring jumped the barrier um and this is when we saw Moxley and Danielson they came running down to the ring um to, to fend them off um and yeah, Moxley took to the mic and, and cut this scathing promo. Uh, you men are smiling now. Like, you better enjoy these smiles. Take all the pictures now because after Sunday, you ain't going to have no teeth. Um, you, know, you ain't going to have no hands to cuddle your kids. You ain't going to be able to take pictures and all of this kind of thing. Like, just basically saying that, you know, we're getting this, this level of unscripted violence at the pay-per-view. It's going to be a blood broth. It's an anarchy in the arena. He didn't mince his words. He, I, fe- I felt like he was very strong in everything he was saying, almost like warning the crowd. This is how, how I yeah. think it. Almost warning the crowd. If you're one of these people online that you know, don't like blood and you don't like violence and all that kind of stuff. This is what you're getting on Sunday. So mm-hmm. don't say you weren't warned. Like, this is what it's going to be. And especially for that message to come from Moxley. Like, yeah, yeah I, I was I was literally yeah. like licking my lips, rubbing my hands like, come, let's go on Sunday. I'm, I'm here for this now. So, um, yeah, a really strong way to, to end the show. A really strong promo to finish it on. I, I can't lie. This needs to be an event. I'm so sorry. It does. It does. I hear it. I can't lie. I hear it. I'm so. Do you know what it is? And I'm big on tradition. I'm big on listen, championship match. And I and 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 I feel bad because I don't want to undermine these guys, like these young guys, yeah. that you know, like have an opportunity to main event a pay per view with the world title. Like I understand, like how important that is. And nine times out of ten, I would. I would, I would be like, you know what, that needs to the title match needs to main event. But this, but this is the one. You know what, this is the one out of ten. <laughs> do you know what it is? It's not just because of how good the feud is. It's because I, I, I don't see. This is going to be one of the hardest acts to follow, mm-hmm. in general. Because remember last year's Anarchy in the Arena match was crazy, yeah. and they remember the first ever stadium stampede from the Elite, which was crazy, and then we add all like everyone in this match is a an elite wrestler at bed the worst like the worst wrestler is wheeler you are who's very yeah, good he's cold yeah yeah who's very good and then you've got like literally danielson omega considered the best of danielson and mega moxie considered the best in the world the young mm. Bucks, best tag team in the world claudio's been a like he's a workhorse of all workhorses so it's like this and then just the violence this, like I feel like this is going to be obviously this is the standout feud um, in the company and probably in, even in wrestling at the moment but I feel like coming out of this match, this match is going to be such a hard act to follow that putting these putting these men anywhere but last is going to like, do a disservice to, to these other wrestlers and not to say that these wrestlers won't put on good matches but I just feel like yeah. the levels yeah. are just going to be different so I'm like might as well put this match on the main event. Let us like enjoy the matches that come before because after this match, I don't think the crowd's going to be able to cope. Yeah, I, I think it's one of them ones, like you said, especially because of what the main event, the, the quote unquote the world champ- championship match, should I say, what it is signifying that like, these are the yeah. four these are pillars. They, they've called it the pillars four way match, in it. Like, yeah. if you now don't put these man on last. You're basically poo pooing, you know, everything in terms of trying to build up yeah. and show the crowd who your next lot are. Like, if this was just an any um, four four way match for the world title, they would one hundred percent be in jeopardy of not being the main event right yeah. now. I, I think the only thing is literally keeping them is because, and as much as I want the Anarchy the Arena to main event as well, I would look at AEW sideways if. Yeah. the four pillars match didn't because yeah mm-hmm. that's you basically almost not backing 
what you're now showing and telling the crowd what you've been telling the crowd that this is who's yeah. next up basically so for that reason they have to go i think you've just put the the anarchy of the arena the one before the main yeah. event put that yeah, hardy cool. party nonsense in between um is that anarchy match even arena. happening I think so. I think so. Because they didn't advertise it on the show. Like, because oh, when wow. the Excalibur I was, because when, Ad, when, Ed, well, when Excalibur was reading through the like matches on the pay per view, that match didn't get no. So maybe that's, a, I'll pray that's a pre show match. If that's a pre show match, I have no. Oh, problem. yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. If, <laughs> if it's a pre show match, hey. Yeah. Have at it. Yeah. Go, go, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. They just need to find something like that. To just go in between anarchy in the arena and the world title yeah. match, really. But yeah. um, yeah, no, we 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 should have you know a couple of good matches. You know, it looks like we may get a new international champion. It looks like um, like I said, anarchy in the arena is literally going to be anarchy. It's going to be a mad thing between these two teams. Um, that world title match, like we said, is going to be very special um, between these guys. Hater and Tony Storm haven't really had any direct build between the two of them for their match, but. We saw what their first world title bout was when Hater won it last year. So, um, you know, expect something similar. So, yeah, double or nothing, looking looking good. Um, do you, do you, uh, do you expect any major title changes? Because um, at Revolution, I think, did everyone retain at Revolution? Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone retained at Revolution. So, do you expect any like title changes this this time round, or not really? It's only the international title and possibly the tag team championships that can. Mm. Uh, well, we, we've said about Jade as well. That to be fair, yeah. yeah. So maybe TBS international and at a push the tag team titles. Mm-hmm. Um, I expect MJF to retain. Um, yeah, yeah, and TNT is not on not on the card. It doesn't look like no TNT is on the card. No, Ooh, not a match. Christian. Mm, Christian Woodlow. Well, if they're trying to really poo-poo this entire TNT thing, you give it to Christian. Although Christian will be a very good champion, it will just yeah. rubbish Woodlow and rubbish everything. And then do what's TNT. the whole point of this Arn Anderson thing as well? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think Woodlow will retain, um, rightly or wrongly, but yeah, mm. we'll see. Um, but yeah, it could be possible for a couple of title switches here and there on the show. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, guys, that was AEW Dynamite. Um, I hope you enjoyed um us going through it, us reviewing it. Um, let us know what you thought of the show down below in the comments. Um, hit the like button as well. Like we said, if you want to see our straight to the point predictions for double or nothing, it will be on the channel. Um, so check out check out check those out as well and let us know what you think and let us know your predictions on that video as well. Um any last things, NK, before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, just make sure you just uh, like, comment, subscribe, tune in every Thursday for a Revolution Radio, tune in for um, Indie Takers, and tune in for the main podcast, man. Subscribe, join our YouTube membership, come be a member. Um, you know, you get different perks, get exclusive content. You know, you can be a member of the Discord. Come join the members, man. Come join the members. Join the members. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, then, guys. We will see you again next week. Enjoy Double or Nothing. Um, And, yeah, see you in a bit.